quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Let's take a look at it. It's teal, as you can see, and if you didn't, couldn't see, say you're colorblind, uh, you would know it was teal because the uh, serial number starts with the letter T. And I'll show that to you in just a minute, but let's take a look at it. Here on the back side, you've got a royal imprinted in the metal itself as a casting. And coming on around, just a really pretty typewriter and it is of course reminiscent of the Royal Futura because it is a Royal Futura. It's basically a slimmed down version of the Royal Futura which was a very popular model for Royal uh, contemporaneous with this and they had several variants of the Futura so the 400 to 600 and the 800 and what we see the first question one might ask if you're familiar with the Futura is well what's the difference between a Tabomatic and the Futura? Well great question. Uh, right at the start, and I'll bring it up a little bit closer in view, what you, you miss on the Futura is, you have on the Futura, is a paper table uh, in the back. Uh, it's clear on the 800s, and it's metal on the 6 and the 4. So that's completely absent. You just have to make do with kind of a shorter version, which is fine. Um, the most notable thing that you'll miss from the Tabomatic is that there are no magic margins. Where are those magic things? They have magically disappeared. Now, some people may be lamenting the loss of the magic margins being replaced by a push and slide margin setting device, which you see later on in the Sahara and Safari models, a simplified margin system. Um, but I don't totally miss the magic margins. The magic margins are fun and they're, they're cool to push and hold and slide the margin, but it sure is obvious and easy to push down and slide this and see right where your margins are. I've never had a problem doing that with the Smith Corona models or Brother models. So I think uh, even though this was a cheapening or a lesser feature, I like it better in many ways because it's very simple to use. It requires no explanation, and it just works. Kind of like the tab matic to begin with. So what's up with that name? Well, it's kind of funny because I actually was interested about, well, what is the omatic? How long has omatic been in our lexicon? You know, when did the first thing, wash omatic, uh, tab omatic, come from? And I don't know, but it's an interesting research topic. But what I find funny about it is, is it's a tab omatic, but Royal always called its tabs what? Columns. So we have magic column set and clear, but a tab omatic. So I guess they're referring to the tab button, but I always found it funny that Royal calls its tabs columns. Uh, anyway, another minor thing that's missing from the Futura models is the Futuras have a uh, ribbon cover button that you press to release the ribbon cover. And this one is the traditional you just lift up and that's also not too bad because so many of the poor Futuras have had their ribbon covers yanked on that the little uh, hasp or latch that connects them uh, and keeps them down are almost always torqued up almost beyond repair so another simplification that works another simplification here that we can look at is wait a minute looking inside where is our ribbon cover color selector normally it's right here on the royals which is funny because they put it inside you have to lift up the ribbon cover to actually get to the ribbon color selector but we don't have it we just have a single color ribbon color selector and the last difference in this dissertation on the differences between the Futura and the Tabomatic is and I'll zoom in let's take a look at the ribbon vibrator so and many of the Futuras and others Royal has a really nifty uh, ribbon vibrator that will uh, it has two arms which fold open and close to allow a really quick and easy installation of the ribbon. It's a really nifty feature because you just push it, put the ribbon in, close it, bam, you're done. Uh, we do away with that, and I'll go ahead and unfeed the ribbon. It's just uh, a simple tying. Just another uh, simple stamping. It's easy to feed because it's got a great big opening, but it is effective, and now I'm inky. But uh, there you go. And uh, your of course, just now that we're inside the machine, your, this lever here is a ribbon reverse mechanism, a manual one in case your automatic doesn't trip. And for the newbies among us, this, these little arms right here are the automatic ribbon reverse trip levers. 
So when your uh, pre-installed grommet or knot you have tied in your ribbon uh, reaches the end of the ribbon, it pulls this out and that reverses the direction that the ribbon is winding. All right, let's take a look at the overall features really quickly. We have uh, platen knobs here. We have a carriage release lever here, one on each side, which is nice. I've already talked about our margin set levers here. This is your paper release lever, so you can slide paper in and adjust it if it's in crooked. Unlike the Smith Coronas, where that's a very stiff lever, here it's very light, but it works just the same. It's just kind of odd. You always think initially, oh no, this is broken because it's not stiff, but it works just fine. You've got paper rollers on a paper bale, which has a ruler. Spinning around to this side, it's kind of a sneaky thing they did. Now, I suspect, I don't know if this is rubbed off or not on my example. I don't think so. There's no decal that I can see here, a residue. But this is your line. You do have line selectors. So that's three, uh, two, and one. So uh, you have that. They didn't trim all the functionality out. I thought initially there was no line color or nine uh, line selector, but there is. It's just right here. And then here's your freewheeling lever to allow you to freewheel. And of course your carriage return. And we have, if we'll zoom back out again, we have exactly the same angular uh, styling that the Futura has because this is a Futura body. There's no difference whatsoever um, with that other than it doesn't say Futura and 400, 600, 800 back in the back. All right, so this was made in 61. It was a slim down model, so not surprisingly, it does not have a dedicated number one exclamation key. You would, of course, use a lowercase l to make the number one, numeral one, and period backspace apostrophe uh, would give you an exclamation if you really need to shout about something. So let's switch over here in just a second and load up on paper for a typing All test. Alright, we're ready to put our tab o -matic to the test. We just push and slide and we'll set our margins in just a little bit. And we've rolled our paper in, get ready to start. The quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all, whoops, margin release, all begin. Okay, so um, just like almost every really well-functioning Royal, it has a very smooth typing action, very smooth typing touch. Um, some Royals will skip. The QDLs, for example, are just sort of notorious, unfortunately, for skipping. But the Futuras seem to have fixed that problem, and this is one of those. The typing touch is just wonderful. Um, very easy, simple to use. Uh, we talked about the tab, so if we want to set a tab, let's set one at 20, tab over. We hit our magic column set button. Come back, let's hit a tab. And there we are, right to 20. There's another at 30. We go right there. So very simple. tab o -matic has tabs, and that's awfully nice. Um, one little glitch I did notice when I was typing that, and we can reveal all glitches, is uh, when the line lock engaged, or the margin was reached, the line lock did not fully engage, so we typed over. We typed, we all begin. So there's a little glitch there. I'll have to look at that and see if I can resolve that. And if not, it's not the end of the world. Just don't type over your margin when you run to the end of it typewriter repair life stories. But in any case, let's go ahead now and I'll bring out a Royal Futura just to give you a flyby of this machine. But before I do, one other thing I mentioned, or forgot to mention is, we also, in addition to not having a, a line color selector, we don't have a touch selector. So there's no little spring-loaded device normally right over here that would uh, let you regulate the touch, but it's been set to sort of a middle position and where I would put it anyway, so it works out pretty well. All right, we started out with basically the base model of Futura, the Royal Tabomatic from 1961, introduced in May 2nd, I believe, of 1960. So it's this one is pretty fresh off the assembly line. This is a Royal Futura 800, so quite dramatic in terms of, of color scheme, but essentially identical. We don't have the crenellated front piece, and we don't have the touch button, but we have uh, the tabs are the same. Uh, but the Futura 800 has a dedicated one, another plus feature. Now let's check what else it has. In the back, we have our clear paper table, as we've mentioned, and a paper guide, which is also absent. We have the magic margins. We have a labeled uh, 1, 2, and 3 on our selector. Now that could have been a, a decal that went missing, but I don't know. Um, and then we have the interesting ribbon vibrator. We just press them in to easily attach your 
ribbon. And then we also have this little support for cards, a card uh, support for typing postcards or whatever. That's also been simplified out of existence on the tab of Matic. So we just press, there we go. We have a touch control on the Futura, which is absent. And we have a ribbon color selector, most notably on the right-hand side. Other than that, it's identical in terms of its layout. All right, there you have it. Both the Futura line and the Tabomatic have the same wonderful leatherette case, and we are blessed that ours still have their handles because about every one in, maybe one in three still do. Unfortunately, this plastic was just not up to the task of lasting 50 years in many cases, and so these will crack and they'll lose their uh, structural integrity and they've been replaced many times over. I've replaced a number of these with belts and other strips of leather, but this one's still here, so we're happy. One other thing I forgot to mention difference-wise is the Futura also has this nifty aerial TV antenna, aka paper support in the back, which is kind of fun to have as well. But here's the case for both the Futura and the tab matic It's a really nice, robust, uh, well-made, stitched, leather-like material that uh, really does a good job. So all in all, our pros and cons, if you like the Royal Futura, if you like Royals in general, you're going to like the tab -O matic It's a single color, simplified version of the Futura. I really like the, the uh, teal color. It, this particular model has a great uh, condition on its crinkle coat. There's just a little bit of a scrape right here, and that makes me sad because it wasn't there before it was shipped to me. Uh, the shipper just didn't clip the machine into its case. And just to show you that, future shippers, this down here on the left, those levers there and there, when properly positioned, will lock the typewriter into its case. And we'll just flip you up here to show you how. Right in here by going into these positions, they will lock the typewriter securely into position and protect it for another 50 years without any rub marks. But all in all, it is a fairly small ding on an otherwise awesome tab matic uh, typewriter. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the Royal Tabomatic. Please like, subscribe, and share.